It's taken over 600 hours to plan the logistics, automations, and power production to do what we're going to do today, which is to cook up some nuclear pasta. So hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory where yes, we are making nuclear pasta today, which is essentially a contained neutron star, which go figure, has been pretty crazy to automate. But luckily we are done with about half of the automations we need to do which is to make the pressure conversion cube, this bad boy. But now we have to deal with the other half and arguably harder part of the battle, this. Copper powder, which looks simple enough. It just takes some copper ingots and a constructor. What's so scary about that? Well, I'm about to demonstrate to you why today is gonna be so insane and why it's gonna take me probably 30 or 40 hours to actually automate all of that copper powder. First up, to make the nuclear pasta, we need particle accelerators, these bad boys, the loops, which take on average a thousand megawatts each, along with the copper powder and the cubes. Cubes are done, copper powder though. We need a hundred of that per minute to make half a nuclear pasta per minute. And because I'm absolutely insane, we're gonna be making a lot of nuclear pasta per minute, a lot more than half of one. Let's just say five, for example though. So if we're making five nuclear pasta per minute, that means we need 10 particle accelerators, which is gonna be a thousand copper powder per minute. Okay, and we just need a bunch of constructors, right? No problem. Well, each constructor makes 50 copper powder per minute. So a thousand divided by 50 is 20. And if we need 20 of these bad boys, oh. Each one of those is gonna take 300 copper ingots per minute. So even with this basic example of making five pasta per minute, uh, we would need 6,000 copper ingots. And spoiler alert, but we can make a lot more than five pasta per minute. But still just going with that 6,000 number, the most efficient copper ingot recipe in the game requires this entire machine, which can make 37.5 copper ingots per minute. Oh, and each of these machines needs 30 megawatts, water, and of course, the ore. And at the end of the day here, we're gonna be using up so much copper and space that I've had to plan my entire playthrough around making this copper powder. So I looked at the world map of Satisfactory here, where we have our nuclear power plant over here, our main base is like here, this is the swamp, etc. And I was like, which biome will be sacrificed to the powder gods? And I was like, well, this area looks pretty good, right? You got some water, but then there's just not enough copper ore. So I turned that into the nuclear power plant instead. I looked over at this desert here, which has tons of copper ore, but there's not enough water for our refineries. So that only left one option. The green fields had to be sacrificed. So now by the end of the day, we will brick this entire place up with hundreds of refineries and particle accelerators in order to make a bit of pasta. So let's begin. First, of course, we need all of the copper ore. More accurately, the 6,000 per minute we can extract from this biome with our Mark III fully overclocked miners. And then we need to make our master plan for this area. And of course, the main thing is, how many copper ingots do we actually need here? It's gonna be about 15,000 per minute. And the scary part, how many refineries will we need to make all of those ingots? Well, if each refinery can make 37.5 per minute, that means 15,000 divided by 37.5 is 400. 400 of these. And even if we fully overclock all of those, we'd still have to build 160. So you know what? We're not gonna overclock any of the refineries. Because to be honest, I'm scared. Each of these already takes up 30 megawatts. So at the low end, this would take 12,000 megawatts just for the refineries. That's not to mention the particle accelerators, the portable miners, and everything else. So yeah, we're gonna build the 400 refineries. Yeah, rip this entire biome. Thank goodness they added in blueprints though, and we have a couple things to help us out, like our factory blocks, which are kind of like our basic building block for our mega builds we do. So. They have a top floor, a bottom floor, and this space in between for belt work and also a place to hide the power. Plus, we have another blueprint for refineries, which can make the solids. 
So we have the water input there, we have the solid input there, and out where poop, the copper ingots themselves. This of course is three refineries <laughs> that can fit on one factory block. So how many blocks do we need then? About 134. 134 of these massive factory blocks. And that ends up looking something like this. This massive blot on this lush green surface. So sorry to ruin your view, Moth, but at least the 400 refineries aren't polluting the air yet. Don't worry, that won't happen for a while. We have a logistical nightmare that is gonna be unfolding. Trying to get all of the copper ore to this location. Like we have copper there, copper way down that hill there. And we have this ugly platform just hovering in the sky. That's not gonna be the case though. Again, blueprints, handy. And we have some cool decorations that we can throw on here. Like this. This simple brutalist looking grill thing. But after a little bit of decoration and a bit more concrete, it'll look really good. Back to the logistics nightmare at hand though. We still had to get all these materials over to this platform. So some of the copper nodes are relatively close and we can kind of just belt those from A to B. But the others, we're probably gonna have to use like trucks or some kind of other form of transport. Maybe drones, probably trains, I don't know. Good thing is, since this platform is so high up, we can probably do a lot of our logistics underneath the platform. Ooh. So what I'd like to say if we weren't constantly bothered. Nice thing with this project is though, since we're bricking the entire biome anyway, I don't really care about going all out. So as I was saying, we can do a lot of our logistics work down here. And with this giant fart rock kind of in our way, we can use that a bit to our advantage and make a giant truck loop around it. So the trucks would enter through some kind of tunnel there, take a right, and then off in this space, we can make a bunch of truck stations. And of course, we have handy dandy blueprints for the truck stops as well. So we can just place them down there. And we can kind of extend this, well, <laughs> across the entire biome. So we really can just use trucks for everything today. Oh, dude, though, if we're gonna have trucks driving all over the place, that's gonna have a bunch of other problems too. We gotta have train tracks everywhere? And the trucks do not drive across those very nicely. So they're gonna have to all move. And then of course we're gonna need truck stops at pickup points too. How much copper do we have here? 1,800, that's three normal nodes. Yeah, that's gonna take at least two trucks running back and forth. And there's not a good spot for a truck station. What can we do? Uh, this has to move. We could probably snug that up to the right, and then have the trucks going up and down this way. Oh, hey, friends. That'll work out pretty well. And actually, if they're going up and down this hill, we can just set up the pickup point here. Yeah, that'll work great. We'll come down here, go out to there. We'll build a couple more truck stops and bring the copper ore over. Small little problem with all this, though is that this train track we need to move is mission critical to our world survival. We have a train that's bringing essential nuclear material to our nuclear power plant, and if it stops for any amount of time, we risk a nuclear meltdown. And if that happens, I don't know if I can handle that, <laughs> especially with this daunting project we have today. So I'm gonna try and build as much as we can preemptively, and then we can kind of switch the tracks all in one go. So while it's on its longest leg of the journey, going from where we're at to the other side of the map there, uh, let's finish up this entire track before it comes back. Okay, but that wasn't too bad though. I'd say it looks pretty good. Couple things to figure out, but generally, the spice is flowing, and so is the copper ore. Got all the infrastructure here built, and it is looking pretty good. Needs a bit more detail, but it'll work. Just the platform is over here, on top of the water well that we're not going to use. And everything is fine. Tons of room for trucks. And the trucks now have a destination as well. Because I've practically finished up the truck station drop-off area. But before we keep doing any more logistics stuff, there is actually a power thing I need to address. You see, with today's project, we're going to be building all those refineries and particle accelerators and stuff. So power could get a little spooky and our power plant isn't actually fully 
on right now. You see, I turned off a bunch of the reactors when we had that little nuclear scare a little while ago. And so we don't blow the power grid. I'm actually gonna turn the rest of the reactors back on. Because all these machines turning on at once might cause a problem and I don't really want that problem. And I've made a bunch of fixes to the nuclear power plant, so we shouldn't run into another nuclear waste problem ever again, smile. And turning on all of the reactors now shouldn't be a big deal. Probably. And so the power plant is back to being fully operational, and the nuclear waste is moving at full speed again too. But now as we work on the rest of the pasta, I can keep an eye on the plant here to make sure it's all running properly. Back to the logistics work, we still have lots of resources to gather, a lot of which from this lake down here, which is some copper and some coal for our trucks. But to transport things, we're gonna have to move this train track kind of out of the way. Or you know, it's probably just easier to raise the track higher up. Then we can run some transport underneath. And that didn't take too long at all, it looks really good. And then I quickly made another stop over by this copper node over here. So the only resource nodes we still need are just the ones that are really close by our platform. And they just need to be belted over. But I don't want to have the belts running on the ground. So let's just take a minute here and put some kind of cool belt blueprint together. And to be honest, I kind of have a pretty good idea of what we can do. Kind of inspired by the train work we've been doing, we can just have some concrete pillars going up, get rid of the middle one, throw on our conveyor pole, in the middle, and then we can have the beams on the side to kind of hold it all together. Paint it all nicely, and then we can even include a little power nub on the top. And then we can connect power going all over the world very easily too. And that is practically perfect. Mainly because we can actually kind of preset the paths for these pillars by just putting the small concrete pillars on the ground. Then we can just build those on top. So we can just build these all along the ground in a straight line, again using the pillars to guide us. All shall work out great if this would snap onto that nicely, but it doesn't. Extremely annoying, but we will make do. Ah, oh, and that looks fantastic. I at least a lot better than having all the belts on the ground. And, oh, I was about to say, as we fly over our world, It'll look better, but there's like this thing happening here. What is this? Is this happening in the blueprint? I think this is called like Z texture fighting or something like that, but it is annoying me to no end. We cannot have this be. Can we do anything about this? What if we had that there? <laughs> Just put a hat on top. It fixes everything, right? It does not. Uh, okay. What if we have leaves just going to there. Ah, but I've seen the light. <laughs> that looks so much better. Ah, dude, these, these are it. This is the design. Just need to figure out what to do up top there. Okay, I gotta be honest. I actually could not figure it out. There is no way. I tried like a hundred different things, spent like an hour on the project, but thankfully I was streaming and my Twitch chat saved the day. Now we have our ground support, and it has the most ingenious solution to fix that clipping error. Check that out. What is that? What is that? That is a conveyor lift floor hole. I put one of those right on top of the pillar, and it covers up that annoying bit. And I got it in position by building foundations right up top here placing down the floor hole, and then getting rid of the foundations again. Isn't that ingenious? Plus, there's that extra little ring for the power nub too, so it looks even better. We got like the yellow hazard thing on top. Oh, dude, it's perfect. I love it. We're gonna use this thing all over the place. Actually, <laughs> I already have. Behold, our beautiful new belt lines going everywhere. Perfect. We can stack them to the proper heights so they all look matchy matchy. It brings over the power just fine. Look at these beautiful highways all across our world here. Dude, when we're flying above this area, it is gonna be incredible. I should have done this way earlier. Ah, nah. You know what? I never would have had the patience for this if we didn't have blueprints. Now that we have blueprints though, yeah, this is the way. 
in most scenarios anyway. Sometimes building belts on the ground looks pretty good. And of course we can use some basic belt highways. Because admittedly a lot of them together start to look a little weird. But they do get the job done. And because of them actually, we are now done collecting materials. So now our platform will have trucks running in over there. We have belts all over the place. And we have two train stations down underneath this platform here, which I've now attached. Because space-wise, all of this is just for refineries, and this will probably be everything else. So, next phase. Do we build the 400 refineries now? No. <laughs> I'm too scared to start, okay? We actually do need another thing, though. We need the sippy drink, the water, uh, it's, which is not going to be too bad. Again, we need 400 refineries, so 400 times 10 is just 4,000 water per minute. 4,000 water per minute divided by 600 pipes is 7 full pipes of water, pretty much. And we can just grab that from over there. The ocean. And quick check here. How many of these- Oh, I- Oh, I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> How many of the water extractors do we need? We need 4,000 water. Each of these fully overclocked. I'm pretty sure can deal with 300 water per minute. Yes, 300 water per minute. So 4,000 divided by 300. It's gonna be 14, yes? Yeah, about 14. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Uh, I think we can just build some kind of dam looking structure in between here then. And it should only really take a boop. And it's done. Like after all the belt work and the trains and the trucks, it's just like, eh. One little pipeline, no big deal. Sippy drink has been secured. So does that mean it's refinery time? Nope. I'm honestly still too scared. Like, even though we do have the blueprints, there is going to be so much belt work that I, I just don't want to get started. Also because I know me. And I know the only way I'll get all the refineries done is if I do them all in one go. And that's just going to be one morning when I wake up and I'm like, it's happening. Oh man, though, I'm kind of running out of distractions here. The foundation's built. I brought the coal in for the truck stations. And I even set up the truck paths and got the truck station over here nice and decorated. So now there really is nothing left to do but refine. So let's go to the blueprints. Let's add these to our to-do. Uh, each of these can make three refineries. So how many blueprints do we need? 133, okay. How many materials is this gonna be? Oh my God. 4,000 engines, 4,000 encased industrial beams, 12,000 pipe, 12,000 copper sheet. Oh my gosh, that's so many items. I, I don't even think we have enough in storage for this. Like one bin is what? Ooh, just enough steel pipe. Uh, the problem's definitely gonna be motors though. Yeah, we're, we don't really have a lot of motors. See, I kinda had a little bit of trouble with our truck system over here. But I changed it all up and fixed it so it's not an issue anymore. But yeah, on the item front, we're gonna have a bit of a problem. But you know what? This is actually fine. I'll take a break for a little while, let the items build up, and then we can build everything all at once. And okay, we should be ready to go. I brought a bunch of items over so we can build a decent chunk of things. And it should go smoothly. Uh, we have all the power connected underneath these factory blocks so we can fly around. And we have our blueprints ready. We just have to be careful that we place everything perfectly first try. There cannot be any margin of error or hover pack dying out. And okay, got the first row built and 12 more to go. And then comes the extremely annoying belt work of connecting all of the systems together. Hooking up the power, of course, pipes, and for my sanity, some painting. And shockingly, after like only an hour, the 400 refineries are in place. And man, I gotta level with you. It's been a long time since I've put together a mega project like this. And man, does it look so freaking satisfactory when it's all put together. But in reality, we've only just begun. Because our next objective is to load and unload all the materials into these machines. And there are 30 refineries per row meaning that we are going to have an output of 1,125 copper ingots per row, which is more than a 780 belt. And then input-wise, each machine will need 10 water and 15 copper ore. So 15 times 30 is 450, and of course 10 times 30 is 300. Oh, and by the way, you probably noticed that the first machine here is actually overclocked. 
Because in reality here, we only actually have 390 refineries built, and we needed 400. But to use the blueprints, and to keep with all the patterns, and it looking nice, I used the power shards to pick up for the shortfall. Now we have to deal with the inputs, and we can organize that by using the middle space in our factory blocks. And then for the outputs, what was it, 1125 minus 780 is 345. So we'll have one full 780 belt on the end, and then the first nine-ish machines here. I guess with the first one being overclocked, it's gonna be the first nine machines. We'll go on their separate belt to somewhere else. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we cut it off here, and I'll just go to the lower floor. Then the big thing is just gonna be underneath here doing all of the belt work. I gotta admit, I think I've made one mistake with this whole project and that's not leaving more room in between these foundations. Like, I really wish there's, like, two wall segments worth of room, but here we are now. And we're gonna have to do a little bit of clipping and a little bit of weird stuff, but... Yeah, we're, we're too far along. But all of that will be hidden, so who really cares, right? Right. It's in the box. Forget about it. Because we have to think about our next problem anyway, where we have to load balance 450 ore per row. So first order of business then really is to gather everything together into one spot and have all of the copper ore brought to one location and then we can distribute it all over the place. Which shouldn't be too bad either because at the end of the day really we'll have a bunch of 600 belts and we can just stuff them onto Mark IV belts which can handle 480 items per minute. But then from that 480 belt we need to extract 30 ore per minute somehow and i think we can just do that by having a 480 belt go through here go through there having a 60 belt go through here and then re-merge actually off to that way and then the other 30 from this splitter will just go out to space and we'll do that for each 600 belt of copper ore we have and we can make this a little bit more efficient too with some overflow shenanigans Though, even I have to admit, this is a bit further beyond shenanigans this time. I think the refineries have caused me to lose my mind. Yeah, maybe, probably. Uh, okay. How does this even work? Well, we have all of these 600 belts of copper ore. They each will go into a splitter. 480 will go out to here, and that will go up into a row of refineries. There will be some overflow. That will then combine with every other belt's overflow to the very end of the system. And that will go to its own set of refineries at the very end, somewhere over there. Cool. What's the rest of this? <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Since these are all 600 belts, I split off 120. Uh, and then we have four of the splitters going to these two. So 120 times four is 480. That all goes up here and then scoots out yeah 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 it's something like that no 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 okay no i'm reviewing this and it's exactly like that sorry this is taking me a long time actually you know what this didn't even take me half as much time as the rest of the belt work because you see this little bit of space here was the worst idea ever this entire area is just all belts and there's just no space for anything so it just took this took hours this took like three hours i couldn't believe it it was faster to set up all of the refineries, painting and all, than it was to do all of the belt work there. But, my god, it's it's all done. Just have belts going everywhere. I, okay, I'm losing my mind. A lot, a bit, actually. Okay, but all the outputs are here. Look, it's gonna be so pretty once it's all activated. And everything will end up going to this wall and out to those copper powder machines. That's what we're doing. Copper powder for nuclear pasta. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going crazy. Uh, what's going on with the pipe work? This is actually not too complicated, actually. Uh, all of those rows of refineries only needed 300 water each, except, except the first one in each row, remember, has the overclocking. So it needs a little bit more extra water. So we have an extra pipe here, this one, and it tops up each row of refineries with that little sprinkle of water. That's actually it. All this chaos is for like seven water per row. It, it's, <laughs> it's the worst. Okay, but it, it's all done now. It's all hooked up. Looks pretty cool. This looks pretty cool. 
and I suppose we are ready to go. We can make the copper powder itself. The goal of today. Uh, well, aside from the nuclear pasta. It's finally in reach. How many machines do we have to build for the copper powder? We don't have, ooh, we don't have to build a lot. Each of the constructors that makes copper powder will take up 300 ingots per minute. So if we have 15,000 ingots we can make, divided by 300, is 50 of these guys. But how many constructors can we build on this platform next to us? Ooh, it's looking like 23. That's kind of a good number. If we actually overclocked all these constructors, 50 divided by 2.5, ooh, that's 20. Wait a second, if we have 23 here, we could just get rid of these last three constructors, overclock the others out the wazoo, and then we only have to deal with one floor of belting. Yeah, that's perfect. It's perfect, actually. Because at the end of the day, since we're making so many copper ingots per minute, I wanted to see that outside and moving and grooving every time we come to this area. So all the copper ingots are coming through this wall here. Now we can just bring them over and across, up here a little bit, and then we can have an open air factory for all the copper powder here. Ooh, that's gonna look so cool. Belt work wise should be fine too, it's just a little bit of work. And will we run into issues with belt limits? No. In fact, this was meant to be a sign from the satisfactory gods. Because each overclocked constructor needs 750 ingots per minute. And remember how we're setting up two output lines for each row of refineries? Like we have the nine refineries and then we have the rest of them? Well, the rest of them, guess what? They make 750 copper ingots per minute. So for most of the copper powder, we can just take one belt, send it into one machine, and call it a day. But still a few machines on the end will need some kind of overflow item injection type system. Because the numbers are weird with that overclocking. So that was it. That was the final step. The belt work is done. And yeah, it was pretty simple. Just one belt to one machine for the most part and some weird stuff at the end there. And the whole thing is ready to go. We can turn this all on <laughs> and see what's broken. If it's like an hour of fixes, that would be awesome. But we will see. We shall see. Everything's getting distributed, balanced out. Nice, 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 nice. Overflowing all the way down the line here. Why does it look like it stopped? I'm scared. Oh, it's moving. Okay, good. Get rid of that, because it's clipping. I'll fix it later. All right, and that just sends all of the ore out that way. Main thing is, are the machines actually on? Ooh, they are. <laughs> Exciting. Except for you. Why aren't you on? There you go, sir. Okay. Fantastic. It's gonna be a little scary though because it's gonna take probably an hour or two for the belts to fully saturate. Remember, the copper ore has to go through all 30 machines all the way to the end and that, uh, yeah, that's gonna take forever. Okay, but the big thing is they're all turning on. I'm not seeing any other red lights yet. Okay. Any belt problems down there? No, I'm seeing our first bits of copper. Oh, look at that! That's so cool! It begins! Wait a second. <gasps> How? 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 It's impossible. It's impossible. It's imp- How? 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 In a thousand different realities. This- uh, we, What? What? Uh, how? <laughs> Words cannot describe my pain. How is there copper ore on one of the belts? Oh my god. Oh boy. It should be pretty easy to find at least. Oh, you know, I actually know exactly what happened. Here's the problem. I have the mergers here and the splitters there. So let me guess, I misclicked and we went from a splitter and cut into a merger. I know this is what happened. I can feel it in my bones. But where? Where? What? 
Wait, no! <laughs> you crafty little demon! Oh boy, okay. There's probably that same problem at least five more times around this system. Super cool. But we should have some copper powder now, yes? <laughs> yes indeed, sir. Yes indeed. But really to get things moving and grooving, I gotta drain the belts and find the rest of these problems. Because I'm sure we're gonna have some copper ore on these belts too. Oh yeah, and super quick look inside as well. I left this massive space of belt work here, just so we could see everything in action. Like we could have put all the constructors underground, but man, sometimes you gotta play by the rule of cool. So good news, bad news. Good news is things are working. Bad news is we have that problem everywhere where there's copper ore on the copper ingot lines, but I'm draining them, finding the problems over there and working it out. It takes a long time though to see everything in action. So we're actually gonna move ahead on the loops because now that we have the copper powder, we are one step away from the pasta. All we gotta do is build particle accelerators. And drumroll please, but end of the day, I wanna build 25 particle accelerators so that we can make 12.5 nuclear pasta per minute. That's the goal. The big enchilada, the grand reveal. All of this, and practically all the production from our aluminum build here, is to make 12.5 pasta per minute, which is mind boggling. So let's go ahead and race to the finish here. Quick change of plan though, we are not gonna build all the loops stacked high on top of this system. The moth kind of flies on by, so we could build this taller, but I like having it out in the open. It looks cool. I wanna fly by this and see everything moving and grooving. So, since the moth path kind of goes right beside this building, we're going to have a bridge for all of the copper powder going to that cliff side there. So way up here, we can start building a massive floor where we can build all of the loops. Actually, you know what? Just looking back at this area here, even if we wanted to stack the particle accelerators, what, we could fit maybe 10 per row? So this would be, yeah, no, this would look ridiculous with all the loops stacked up anyway. I prefer having all the loops in one super massive room for us to kind of walk around and see. So the new loop space has been built. All 25 of them have been hooked up and belted together. And I flew over a drone from our aluminum build all the way over to here to bring in the pressure conversion cubes. And so with that all done and all of the machines preloaded with the materials, all we gotta do is turn it on, and we got pasta. Oh, I haven't been checking on nuclear though. It's probably fine, right? Probably. Let's see what our power is looking like. Oh man, perfectly stable, exactly what we wanna see. Nice. Okay, then all we have to do is flip the lever and wow. <laughs> what, really? Well, yep, yeah, that'll, that'll do it. Oh my gosh, wait. So the loops plus the refineries is gonna take up pretty much 50,000 megawatts. <laughs> Just for this first base elevator part. That, that is amazing. Amazing. Okay though, enough. Let's get it started. Man, I am really happy we activated all of the extra nuclear reactors too, cause this is gonna be crazy. Ah, my favorite part though. Starting up a factory like this, especially with the loops on a row. Marvelous! That's it. They're done. We have it. Pasta. I see it. Glorious pasta. Our first space elevator part has been automated. And by the way, if you're wondering why they look so funny, it's because having a neutron star in there distorts gravity so much it even distorts light. And that's why this is the first space elevator part we made, just because of how cool it looks. And now I'm sure in no time, we are going to have thousands of them. But now there is one final order of business, and that is bringing all of the pasta back to our main base for the space elevator. So everything's being loaded up into this port. 
and thanks to the incredible planning of the genius that is past Kibbs. We actually have drone ports already on our base, awaiting space elevator part deliveries. And there they are, our first of four space elevator parts, which can now sit proudly in our storage room over there, where it will soon be joined by its other three brothers. But of course, we'll be getting to that next time, where we are not done with this location, not by a long shot. So look forward to future shenanigans. But for now, I just want to take a moment and thank you guys for enjoying this leg of the journey. It's been one heck of a ride, and you better believe it ain't stopping. So thank you so much for watching, and a huge shout out to people supporting me on Patreon as well. But anyway, that's gonna be all for now. So have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye